All right, welcome back, guys. Now we're going to go ahead and start just gain staging. And this video is going to be me less talking, which might be a relief for some of you, <laughs> but mainly just focusing on the music and messing around with the different volumes of everything and then explaining afterwards why I made the certain choices that I did. But it's pretty straightforward. Gain staging is all just placing instruments the way you want them to be placed in context of everything else, right? Make sure that everything is present and has a place as well. But for gain staging, it's especially important that you decide what you want your focal point to be, that you decide what you want your main element to be, and in any given part of the song that is, right? So in the drop, that might be your synth and your kick. And then for a break, that might be your vocal or and piano or something of that nature. But you want to make sure that you select those and then mix accordingly downwards from there in terms of importance. And this is something which in, in the beginning might be a bit difficult to focus on, but eventually it's just going to be second nature to you. So let me go ahead and quickly just loop this quick section here for the drop, because that's what I'm going to be gain staging right now. And yeah, I'm going to go over why I did certain things in terms of volume, the way I was hearing them in just a second. So, you saw me work on some audio for a minute here, 
and you could see me doing certain different things. I even started doing a bit of automation on the vocals here, and I made sure, for me, it was really important since uh, the beginning, actually, of the track, when I first played it to you guys in the last video, I noticed that the breaks were a bit quiet, so I made, to, made sure to just bump up the volume of the main elements in the break a bit to make sure that the drop still hits hard, but it's not this kind of really undynamic or too dynamic for, for a matter of fact that it's not too dynamic in the sense that I have to turn my volume up in the break and then once the drop hits I'm like oh this is way too loud let's turn it down so you want to make sure that the basically flow of the song makes sense and you saw me here adjusting the kick and snare as well making them a bit quieter also a little I actually have to match this here I just noticed so now I can actually explain what I was doing so basically in Ableton 10 it's pretty cool you can just hit command E and or control E if you're in Windows and then you can go ahead and basically just split the field out here let me see where the actual command E or I can't find it right now in here, but basically hitting Command E if you highlight a certain a certain region is going to split that out for you, and then you can go ahead and edit things with Clip Gain in a different way. It's it's for me personally, it's easier than having to constantly automate certain things. And you saw me as well. I really had to beef the sub up as well, and I'm also going to be doing a lot of sub specific editing to make sure that it kind of grooves a bit better with the drums and everything more specifically, but so far, in terms of gain staging, this has definitely helped a bit. Everything's flowing a bit more evenly now, and now I can go ahead and move on to starting to throw different plugins on. And of course, gain staging is something which you don't just do once and then it's over. Of course, maybe if you start fixing certain frequencies with EQs or compressing the music, you'll decide to make things maybe a bit louder here or a bit quieter there. But just as a general consensus, I like making sure that I can get the best sound out of the track that's been given to me before I start putting plugins on. So I see a lot of people, before they even tackle gain staging, basically throwing on EQ plugins and different kinds of compressors and all of that onto different channels before they've even addressed the whole music in itself because it's this autopilot mode, right? But... I want to really instill into you guys that you start off using a process, that you have a thought process when you're approaching certain things and mixing especially, and that you're not just throwing things on and seeing what happens. That, on the other hand, is something which you also have to do, which is a contradicting thought, but that's more so something which you would do in production or when you just don't or if you just kind of want to be a bit more experimental. But in terms of administrative getting a mix done, you have to have a process. And in between that, you can be more or less creative as well. But just as a general consensus, try to get your track to sound as good as possible after you've got the production down with just gain, and then take it from there.